You've probably asked ChatGPT or Bard the same question twice and gotten completely different answers. One time it nails it, the other time it's completely off. Frustrating, right? Well, I spent months testing every major AI tool and diving deep into prompt engineering research from Google, OpenAI, and Microsoft. And I found something surprising. It's not the AI that's inconsistent. It's how we're asking the questions. The difference between a terrible response and a genius-level answer often comes down to just a few words. Welcome back to bitbiased.ai, where we do the research so you don't have to. Join our community of AI enthusiasts with our free weekly newsletter. Click the link in the description below to subscribe. You will get the key AI news, tools, and learning resources to stay ahead. So in this video, I'm going to show you the exact science behind prompt engineering, the art of crafting AI inputs that consistently give you brilliant outputs. We'll cover everything from the fundamentals that most people get wrong to advanced techniques used by AI researchers that can boost your results by over 10%. By the end, you'll know exactly how to engineer your prompts for better, more reliable AI results every single time. First up, let's talk about what prompt engineering actually is and why it matters so much more than you think. What is prompt engineering? Here's the thing about AI language models. They're incredibly powerful, but they're also incredibly literal. Prompt engineering is essentially the process of crafting and optimizing the exact input you give a language model so it produces the best possible output. Think of it like designing a clear roadmap for the AI to follow. Google Cloud defines it as the art and science of designing and optimizing prompts to guide models towards the desired responses. And that word choice, art and science, is important. It's not just about being polite to the AI or using magic words. It's about strategically including the right context, instructions, and examples to steer the AI toward understanding your intent and responding meaningfully. By carefully writing our prompts, we're essentially teaching the AI what we want without having to retrain the entire model. And here's where it gets interesting. This skill is becoming one of the most valuable abilities in the AI age. Why this matters more than you think. Now you might be wondering, can I just ask the AI normally? and it'll figure out what I mean? Well, here's the problem. Large language models like ChatGPT are inherently stochastic, which is a fancy way of saying they're somewhat random. Small changes in how you word. Something can lead to massive differences in the answers you get. Good prompt engineering tames that randomness. For example, if we set sampling controls like temperature, top K, and top P wisely, the model's output becomes far more reliable. Google's guide points out that LLMs are stochastic, not deterministic. You'll get repeatable, better output when you configure sampling controls like temperature, top K, and top P in combination, not in isolation. In practice, that means we might reduce temperature for precise tasks where we need consistency, or experiment with top P to balance creativity and accuracy when we're brainstorming. These aren't just technical settings, they're levers that give you control over the AI's behavior. And once you understand them, you'll never go back to default settings again. The fundamentals, clarity and structure. Let's start with the foundation that most people completely miss. First rule, always be clear and specific. This sounds obvious, but you'd be surprised how many people give vague rambling prompts and then wonder why the AI gives vague rambling answers. Here's a pro tip that changed everything for me. Put your instructions before any context or data. OpenAI's documentation emphasizes using separators like triple quotes or hashtags to clearly mark off your command from the content. For example, instead of jumbling everything together, structure it like this. Summarize the text below as a bullet point list. Text, your input here. See the difference? You're creating a clear boundary between the instruction and the content. This helps the model see what to do and what to process. It's like the difference between someone handing you a messy pile of papers versus a well-organized folder with clear labels. But here's where most people stop short. They're clear about what they want, but not specific enough about how they want it. Don't just say, write a poem. Say, write a short, inspiring poem about AI in the style of Maya Angelou. No more than 12 lines. Being descriptive about context, outcome, length, format, and style dramatically improves your results and wait until you see this next technique. OpenAI shows that providing examples of the desired output format 
helps the model follow along. In their examples, instead of just saying extract entities, they show the exact JSON or list format they want. The model then matches that format almost perfectly. It's like showing someone a finished product before asking them to build one. They have a clear target to aim for. Zero shot versus few shot, the game changer. Now we're getting into territory that separates casual users from people who really understand how to leverage AI. Prompt engineering often uses what we call shots. A zero-shot prompt gives the model just the task description and no examples. A few-shot prompt includes one or more example input-output pairs up front. Microsoft's guidance explains that few-shot prompts, those with examples, better condition the model for the task, while zero-shot means you're going in blind with no examples. So which one should you use? Here's my approach. Start simple with a zero-shot prompt first, then add one to three examples if the results aren't quite there. Google's guide even notes that few shot examples aren't just filler, they're essential for guiding structure, logic, and tone. In other words, giving the model a couple of solved examples in the prompt shows it exactly how to answer, so it doesn't have to guess your intent. I've seen few shot prompting turn mediocre results into exceptional ones with just two well-chosen examples. But here's the catch. Those examples need to be realistic and representative. If you're doing classification, make sure your few shot examples cover the variety of labels you're working with. Otherwise, you're introducing bias before the AI even starts. The power of context. This next part will completely change how you interact with AI. Always feed the model relevant context. If you want a summary, provide the text to summarize. If it's a conversation, include the chat history or the user's previous questions. This seems basic, but Google's cloud docs stress that providing context and examples is critical for helping the AI understand the task at a deeper level. For multi-turn chats like ChatGPT, system and role messages can set the entire behavior. For instance, telling it, you are a friendly customer support agent, will make the tone more helpful and approachable. The Google Guide explicitly separates three layers. System instructions, what the model should do, role, who it's acting as, and context, the data it should use. Setting these layers finely tunes both tone and purpose. Think about it. Prefixing your prompt with, you are an expert doctor versus you are a casual friend will completely change how detailed or technical the answer is. One will give you medical terminology and precise explanations. The other will give you simple, relatable language. Same question, totally different outputs, all because of context. Advanced techniques that actually work. Once you have the basics down, there are some more powerful tricks that can take your prompts to the next level. Trust me, these aren't just theoretical. They produce measurably better results. Chain of thought. This is where you encourage the model to think step by step. Ask it to explain its reasoning before giving a final answer. For complex queries, this often yields significantly better accuracy. In fact, Google's guide calls chain of thought prompting table stakes for complex reasoning tasks. Instead of asking, what's the answer? Ask, what's the answer? Show your reasoning step by step. The difference is remarkable. Step back prompting. Here's a technique I love for really difficult problems. Instead of having the model solve the problem immediately, first ask it for general principles or an outline. For example, what are the steps needed to solve this type of problem? Then use that outline to craft your final query. This meta-level thinking can uncover approaches you'd otherwise miss. It's like stepping back from a painting to see the whole picture before diving into the details. Tree of thought. For extremely hard problems, you can have the model explore multiple solution paths in parallel, basically branching thought trees before deciding on the best answer. This mimics how humans tackle complex challenges by considering multiple approaches simultaneously. Self-consistency. This one's clever. Run a reasoning prompt several times with high temperature and take the most common answer. This voting method makes outputs more robust and reduces random mistakes. It's like getting multiple opinions before making a decision, except the opinions are all from different versions of the AI's reasoning process. React. Reason plus act. 
This combines the model's internal reasoning with external tools. For example, the AI might search the web or run code as intermediate steps. Google Notes React is a way to give LLMs a basic agent-like workflow, which significantly improves real-world answers. The model isn't just thinking, it's acting on those thoughts and gathering more information. JSON and Structured Output When you need structured data, lists, tables, JSON, explicitly tell the model to format its answer accordingly. For instance, output must be valid JSON with field summary and keywords. The guide even suggests including the JSON template right in the prompt. This vastly improves the model's ability to give precise, machine-readable results that you can immediately use in your applications. Prompt variables. Use placeholders like art name or art city in your prompts for reusability. Then you can fill them programmatically or in different scenarios. This is incredibly powerful for automating workflows or building a prompt library that scales across your organization. Automatic meta prompt engineering. This is next level. Let the model help design prompts for you. One technique is to ask the AI to rewrite or refine a prompt. Google's guide describes using the model to generate multiple prompt versions and then selecting the best performing one. This meta prompting can find creative ways to ask your question that you might not think of yourself. It's like having an AI prompt engineer working alongside you. Best practices from the tech giants. Now let me share what Google, OpenAI, Microsoft, and Meta all agree on when it comes to prompt engineering best practices. These aren't just suggestions. They're battle-tested guidelines from the companies building these models. Google emphasizes treating prompting as engineering, not guesswork. That means being systematic and iterative. Test, measure, refine, repeat. Always phrase instructions positively. Say, do this instead of don't do that. The AI is much better at following affirmative instructions than avoiding things. Respect token limits by breaking long inputs into parts or summarizing to avoid truncation. Here's a sneaky one. When listing choices like categories, randomize their order to prevent positional bias. The AI has a tendency to favor options that appear first or last, so shuffling them ensures fairer results. And here's the reality check. No matter how good your prompt is, you need to validate the answer. Always include a final verification step. The prompt gets you 90% of the way there, but human oversight closes that last 10%. OpenAI's best practices echo these ideas. They advise using the latest model, since newer models are generally easier to prompt and more capable. Give clear, detailed instructions up front. They show examples of how to separate instructions, provide context, and iteratively refine prompts. One tip that saved me tons of frustration. Reduce fluff in your prompt by replacing vague terms like a few sentences with exact constraints like three to five sentences. The more specific you are, the better the results. They also explicitly recommend starting with zero shot, then adding few shot examples if needed, and finally considering fine tuning for large scale projects where you're running thousands of similar prompts. Microsoft's Azure documentation introduces the concept of queues, short prefix signals to jumpstart the AI's output. For example, adding a queue like key points before a summary request can nudge the model to list bullet points automatically. These small signals have an outsized impact on formatting. They also emphasize that examples should be realistic. In a classification task, few shot examples should cover the variety of labels to avoid bias. Don't just show the easy cases, include edge cases and tricky examples that teach the model how to handle ambiguity. Even Meta's Llama team offers valuable guidance through AWS blogs. They note that the base Llama models are quite flexible in zero-shot and few-shot mode, while their instruct variants use a more structured conversational format. They stress iterative refinement, try prompts with real data, and tweak them based on results. Build, test, collect feedback, and repeat to ensure your prompts work reliably in the real world, not just in perfect test conditions. Real-world results that prove it works. Now let's talk results, because these strategies aren't just theory. In actual experiments, prompt engineering clearly boosts performance on practical tasks. And the numbers are pretty eye-opening. 
One medical education study gave ChatGPT a mock exam using carefully crafted prompts. GPT 3.5's score jumped by 10.6% and GPT 4's increased by 3.2%. That's a huge improvement just from better prompting. Now, the latest GPT-4 variants that are already heavily optimized showed less improvement because they're already operating near ceiling accuracy, but the point stands. Structured prompting matters most for models that haven't fully internalized the instructions yet. Google's prompt guide walks through real coding tasks, demonstrating how to translate bash commands into Python code and how to debug by having the model generate logs and identify errors. So in practice, you can use prompt engineering for everything, writing creative content, summarizing documents, generating code, debugging, formulating SQL queries, or powering customer service chatbots. I've personally used these techniques to automate content creation workflows, generate marketing copy that actually converts, and even build AI-powered tools for data analysis. The applications are practically limitless once you master the fundamentals. Expert tips and bonus strategies. Let me share some insider tips that experienced prompt engineers use. First, test your prompts across diverse inputs to catch edge cases. Don't just try the happy path. Throw weird, unexpected inputs at it to see where it breaks. That's where you learn the most. Mix up how you phrase similar requests. The AI can sometimes latch onto one particular phrasing, so varying your language helps ensure robust performance across different scenarios. Monitor for hallucinations. Those moments when the AI confidently states something completely false. If you notice patterns in when hallucinations occur, adjust your prompts to ground the AI more firmly in provided context. Iterate by analyzing failures. If the model consistently overfits on a certain label or misses a particular type of question, shuffle your options or rewrite the prompt for fairness. Sometimes the smallest tweak, changing one word or reordering examples, can eliminate a recurring problem. And here's a technique I use constantly. Leverage chat mode for refinement. Sometimes interacting with the model conversationally and asking follow-up questions can refine the output much better than trying to craft the perfect prompt in one shot. It's okay to have a conversation with the AI that back and forth often leads to better results than any single prompt could achieve. Summary and key takeaways. So let's bring this all together. Prompt engineering is about thoughtful crafting of your AI queries. Start with a clear, specific instruction. Provide relevant context and examples. Format the output you want explicitly. Tweak parameters like temperature and max tokens based on your needs. Use advanced techniques like few shot examples for better conditioning, chain of thought for complex reasoning, or metaprompting when you need help designing the perfect prompt. Follow the best practices from Google, OpenAI, Microsoft, and Meta. They've tested these approaches at massive scale. Always iterate and test your prompts in realistic conditions with real-world data. With these methods, you'll consistently engineer prompts that produce better, more reliable AI results. It's not about luck or magic words. It's about understanding how these models think and structuring your requests accordingly. And the best part? These skills compound over time. The more you practice, the more intuitive it becomes. Closing. Thanks for watching. If you found this helpful, give it a like or drop your own prompt engineering tips in the comments below. I'm always learning new techniques, and I'd love to hear what's working for you. With practice, you'll get the most out of ChatGPT, BARD, or any LLM simply by mastering how you ask questions. Remember, the future belongs to people who know how to communicate with AI effectively. And now you're one of them. Happy prompting!